Well, good morning, guys. It's Pastor Andy. Here we are, day four of Uncle Jim's testimony. I hope you're enjoying, and I hope God's using this in your life. Talking about, it's a blessing when you get saved. Can you say amen to that? But it's not long, honey, that that blessing turns into an unbearable burden. Now, let me explain why. You see, when you realize you're going to heaven, help me somebody, when you realize you're going to heaven, it also gives you the knowledge that people that are not saved are going to hell. And my mother liked to die. My mother got a hold of that truth and she turned into a radical, fanatical, agitating, aggravating, irritating, Bible-thumping Baptist mama. How many of y'all know what that is? <laughs> I mean, every time you get around her, she wouldn't talk about church and talk about Jesus, talk about heaven, and just made me so stinking mad I couldn't stand it. My daddy, 53 years old, never saw a medical doctor in his life. Brother Stidham, blood clot went through his heart, blew his heart apart, and he stayed alive until he saw his last loved one. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. And my dad went home to be with Jesus, 53 who ever dream I'd outlive my my daddy. They buried my sweet father from the West Florida Baptist Church, and I went there stoned out of my mind. I don't remember anything the preacher said. They had it in print. They wrote the sermon on my daddy, the richest man I ever knew, and my dad didn't have two cents to rub together. And I was at his funeral service stoned out of my mind. All I remember seeing is my dad in a casket. And after my dad died, I became so concerned about mother. Hey, I want it on record. I'm 210 pounds. I'm 54 years old. And I'm the biggest mama's baby you ever want to see in your life. And if you think that sissified, see me out in the parking lot after the services, and I'll show you what sissified is. I love my mom. I'm still crazy about my little gray-haired mama. But after dad was gone... I'd really become concerned about her being in that apartment by herself. And I'd ride that Harley chopper down to her area. You'd hear that thing coming a block and a half away. It was almost like a ritual. I'd pull up to the curb and my little mother would be at the, at the front door. She'd just four foot eleven, four foot ten. She'd have her hand raised, big smile on her face. She'd be waving. I'd shut that bike down and I'd get off of it and walk up. She'd open the door and throw those little old arms around me and kiss me on the cheek and say, Boy, come on in, let's have a cup of coffee. Mama's missed you. I'd walk through that little living room area and sit down at the breakfast area and she'd run, get a coffee pot, pour me a cup of coffee and run and put it back on the warmer. She'd come back in and she'd slip that little arm around my neck and say, Jimmy, got something I want to ask you. What, Mom? Now hear me, I know exaggeration is a synonym for lying, but I felt like, buddy, she asked me this question 55,000 times. I knew what was coming. What, Mom? She said, Honey, when are you going to come go to church with me? And every time I try to get a little sterner, I tell my mom, Mom, I don't need that garbage. I don't believe in that junk. It's okay for you and Dad, but get off my back. I'll never go to church. And I know I break your heart and hurt your feelings, but Mom, I don't believe in it, so please don't ask me anymore. You understand that, Mom? And my little sweet mother turned her face upside down and sat down and she talked about something else. I drink that cup of coffee and say, Mom, it's time for me to go. She okay, son. She'd walk me out to the door. She'd kiss me on the cheek. And she'd always tell me, boy, hurry back. I love you, and I miss you. I'd get out there and fire that thing up, look back, and she'd be at the door. Little hand, raised little smile on her face. I don't know why I do this. I'm a daddy, okay? So don't let me offend you. But I'm convinced there's no love apart from the love of God, like a God-fearing, God-loving mama ain't not how many of you before you got saved had a mom and daddy that was praying for your soul may I see your hands here tonight and some of you got a mama praying for you right now just begging God to see you saved some of you tonight ought to answer the prayer of your sweet little mama I'd head off to the apartment I'd feel sick son I hurt my mama's feeling again about the well maybe she'll give me a break maybe she'll stop that nonsense 
Well, a couple of days had passed, and I'd think about Mom again, James, and I'd ride down there. There she'd be. I mean, never a time that I ever pulled up that apartment. She wasn't there at the door. Little old hand raised, smiled her face. I'd shut her down. She'd open the door. She'd kiss me on. She'd come on in, boy, let's have a cup of coffee. I'd walk through that living room area, sit down at the breakfast table. She ran, got the coffee pot, poured me a cup of coffee, ran and put the pot back on the warmer, came back in, slipped her arm around my neck and said, Hey, Jimmy, got something I want to ask you. <laughs> what, Mom? Honey, when are you going to come go to church with me? Well, this time I got a little bit more belligerent, more hateful and mean. And I stormed out of that apartment, determined I ain't going back. She's crazy. That crazy church had brainwashed my mother. Warped her. All she thinks about is this church, Jesus, and this heaven stuff. It's just a bunch of nonsense. And I left that apartment determined I'm never coming back. I took off, and because of some of the things that I said, and there's no way in God's earth can I repeat them. I fired that Harley Davidson up and couldn't help but glance back, but first time Mom wasn't at the door. I took off feeling sick, determined I'm not going back. She's crazy with this religious junk. And I headed on home. A couple of days passed, and my only brother, Eddie, called Mama. And they weren't on the phone too long before my mama said, Eddie, got something I want to ask you. And my brother knew exactly. But Mama's going to ask him. And so in order to get Mom off his back, Mama said, uh, my brother said, Hey, Mom, by the way, how's Jim doing? When he asked about me, my mother began to sob. And she bared her heart to her other son. She said this. She said, Eddie, I don't want anything out of life. God's been good to me. I had the best man in all the world, and he's in heaven waiting for me. All I want from this life is to see my kids saved. Eddie, I want to see you saved and go to heaven. I want to see my baby Sharon saved. Oh, how I want you to go to heaven. But my boy Jimmy, I'm afraid he's gone too far and his motorcycle has become his God. And they talked a little bit longer and finally hung up. My brother couldn't wait to get me on the phone, son. He got me on the phone and said, Hey, what's happening, Jim boy? I said, What's going on, Eddie? He said, What's this I hear, man? You're praying to your motorcycle. And I want to know what he was smoking, you know. I, I said, bless God, son, what are you talking about? He said, well, boy, I just talked to Mama. You folks, you, I said to my brother, I said, Eddie, listen to me. Let me get off the phone with you. I want to call Mama. And so he was gracious enough. He hung up, and I called my mother. That phone rang, and that little sweet little voice, hello. And I said, hello, Mom. It's Jim. She said, well, son, we've just been talking about you. I said, yeah. Yeah, I know you have, Mom. i got a question I want to ask you. Did you tell Eddie my motorcycle is my God? She said, I sure did. I said, Mom, what do you mean by that? She said, well, Jimmy, in the Bible. And I said, Mom, just a minute. I know that's the reason I'm breaking your heart. I don't want to hear about this Jesus garbage. I don't want to hear about church. And I really don't want you to preach to me out of a Bible. All I want you to do, Mother, answer my question. She said, well, honey, in the Bible, I said, Mom, what in the world is wrong with you? Can't you get it through your head? I don't want to hear any religion. I don't want you to preach to me. Just simply answer my question. And brother, my mama got testy. And she screamed over the phone and said, Well, if you sh shut your mouth a minute, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. And I shut my mouth and guess what my mama said? Honey, in the Bible, God says anything you put before God, that's your God. And Jim, you put that motorcycle before your mother. You put that motorcycle before your wife and your daughter. You put that motorcycle before God, and that's your God. I said, well, I guess if I came to church, it'd prove you wrong. She said, son, you're afraid to. I said, I'll be there. She said, thank you, bye. <laughs> and I've got that phone stuck up the side of my head. I'm the only one on the end. And I thought, that little conniving mother of mine. And I hung the phone up. I was sharing with Pastor and his family, this has been a real quick week for me. But I can look back 22 years ago, bud. You talk about a week that flew by. My little mother had trapped me to go to West Florissant Baptist Church. Some of you folks my age remember you'd rather die than give in to a dare. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You'd rather eat crow than let somebody think you was chicken. That week flew by, man, and all of a sudden, Sunday morning rolled around.
Well, that brings us to the end of day four. I hope again that God is using this in your life, that you are using this in your devotion time to draw closer to him. I know Uncle Jim is looking down from heaven right now and smiling how we are still sharing the story that God gave to him to make a difference in the lives of others. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you and have a great day.